So thank you for the introduction and for the opportunity to present Achillion to all of you today. I know for sure that every member in the Achillion team have a secret, or not secret, we share it, a dream, a goal, an ambition, and that is to uh, add some new knowledge to how we can stop this vicious cycle of chronic inflammation. So we are a biotech company and we are approaching this challenge by a few well-selected early drug development assets. So chronic inflammation, they are all a lifelong diseases. There is a plethora of them, it affects the whole body. And they share the common theme that they are lifelong, sometimes they are severe, so they shorten the lifespan, and all of them have a huge impact on quality of life. Now, Achillion hasn't chosen to work with a specific disease or an organ, but instead we focus on the biology behind the drivers of inflammation. So, this is our pipeline and everything we want to do the next couple of years. And I would like to introduce the three of these programs to you, just to illustrate how we have chosen them and why we believe that could be a way to move ahead and continue to build value in Achillion. So let's start with Regulus. In the Regulus program, we are developing a new drug candidate called AQ280. It's a JAK1 inhibitor, and we plan a phase two study in patients with eosinophilic esophagitis, or EOE. And I guess that that is still a rather unknown disease. Actually, it was first described in the early 1990s. So what is EOE then? It's like an eczema of the esophagus, one could say. So inflammation driven by an eosinophilic influx that eosinophils, there are cells, immune cells, and they fil infiltrate the esophagus, it gets swollen, and you have a hard time even swallow. Uh, you get pain in your chest, sometimes food gets stuck. And you can see that if you look at the emergency clinic all around the world, it's quite common that people come in and you have to remove food, and sometimes even open up the esophagus a little bit. So we uh, have chosen to work with this indication due to several reasons, and I will show you in the next slide uh, the main reasons from a scientific point of view. Of course, there is a commercial assessment and we can position the drug, but this is a crowded slide. So if you look at or think you're on an immune cell surface, there is an inflammation, it's probably caused by food allergy, and the body messengers of inflammation starts to flow. They're called cytokines. There are receptors on the cell surface, and they recognize these messengers. And then there is a signal into the cell, and there there are these jacks. They are enzymes, and they catalyze this signal that starts the flow of reaction leading to inflammation, fibrosis, and strictures eventually in the esophagus. Now, if you look at dupilumab, that's a biologics was approved two years ago in the US and now in Europe. And they have shown good effect in EOE. And they can stop two of these cytokines, IL-4 and IL-13. But if we inhibit one of those catalyzer, the JAK1, we could actually stop the message from six of those cytokines driving this disease. That made us believe, and that's why we're developing the Regulus program. So, so far, we have concluded a phase one study, and we will have some results to present in the next couple of weeks. It's a classical first-in-man study, and we want to find out, is this drug safe, tolerable? Does it have a good pharmacokinetic profile? And can we see that we actually have YAK inhibition? Then we have to follow some biomarkers. And now, we're aiming at the phase two, in Europe and North America. And hopefully, if everything goes according to plan, we will start it in the end of next year. Now, that was a immunosuppressive approach, suppressed inflammation. Yertab is a little bit different. There we're focusing on ulcerative colitis. It's also affecting a lot of young people, and it has a huge impact on the daily quality of life, of course. 
So instead of being immune suppressive, we would like to help the colon of these patients to recover its immunostatus. That is to see that we have those immune cells that actually dampen the inflammation back again and not just those driving inflammation. And also to get some healing of the mucosal in, in the colon. So we have identified a small molecule, it's an oral mo molecule, and we will deliver it locally in the uh, colon. And the target for this drug candidate is another receptor, it's a transcription factor within the cell. But important to remember is that if you are deficient in the signaling, we know that that is one of the causes of IBD. So if we can get that signal back again, then we could promote mucosal healing and also the correct balance of immune cells. So that's why we choose the target. And it's not just to show the target. And within Achillion we work, of course, with a lot of different uh, preclinical assays and studies and market assessment. And most important of all, we would like to see that our partner are interested in the target we have chosen. Now we have all that in place in Yertab, so we decided to move on with the drug candidate and start to progress towards clinical phase one and A and B in 12 to 18 months. So science, I'm a scientist from the beginning, so I have to show you some graphs, otherwise I would feel that I haven't proven anything to you. So don't put too much effort into this one. This is an animal with a disease that is IBD-like. And we treat that animal for seven weeks with our drug candidate. And then we could show that the colon, it gains weight when you have IBD and it's getting shorter. So if you can m m lose some weight, that is to get a thinner colon and a smaller length, you have succeeded. That is what you see in the bar to the left. So with our drug, we were able to reverse that event. We were also able, in, this, in the one to the right, to see that the drug target actually binds where it should. So we have a biomarker, we can follow um, the efficiency of the drug. And perhaps the most important of all, we could decrease the amount of cells just infiltrating the colon, and we could see that those cells that actually promote inflammation and start those vicious cycles were decreased as well. Now, Alnitak, the third program. Uh, Alnitak is, was actually out-licensed earlier this year. We made a deal with Merck, and then we had worked with the program for three years. And, of course, I can't talk much any longer about the development within the program, but I could illustrate why we choose Alnitak and why I believe that Merck was interested in this program. So, scientifically again, this TAC1 is also an enzyme. And think of it, not as an enzyme, but as a very central switch. So that if you can switch it off, you could actually lower these inflammatory events in many different aspects. So it would match many different diseases as well. We knew that it was undrugged, that was a potential to become the first drug in that class, and we also had some new scientific data. So when we put that together with an idea of chemistry and the feedback from Big Pharma, we decided to start to make molecules, build IP and a data package. And that was what Merck actually then wanted to lean license. So today we have a collaborative work, development work together with Merck and Merck owns all the global rights to this program. I have said we at least a hundred times during ten minutes, and I'm so proud to be part of this team. This is the Achillion core team. They are the inventors, they are the project managers, they are the business development people that together build value in Achillion. And if you like to know more about the team, the programs, and Achillion, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sora. So, what would you say sets Achillion apart from your competitors? 
That is always a tricky question. I hope and believe that the choice of target and the quality, you cannot always be the first in class, but you can be best in class. And if you match it really thoroughly with those biology driving inflammation, you have an edge. And the other edge is that perhaps we start really early on uh, identifying target where we know we can find a partner. You have to be a little bit humble as a small biotech. You can't drive all of them into phase three. You will need to find a good partner. And I think there is always a sense of urgency for new science to reach the patients. And the quickest way is to work with someone that has the resources. Yeah. So how do you decide from the research, okay, this is worth taking further? So it starts with the team. Then we have a couple of KOLs, experts. We do a lot of data, They're looking for different data in patent databases, scientific databases. We go out and ask people. We ask Big Pharma what they do, why they didn't promote the project, they stopped and so forth. And if we could say that there are four criteria, there should be an interest from Big Pharma, there should be a really potential biology that we can validate behind each target. We should be able to do the molecule without 15 years of research. I think those are the cornerstone, and target is key. Target is everything. So you, of course, talked about the, the deal with Merck, and uh, I don't think it's saying too much to say that many companies now look up to Achillean for your entrepreneurship. So what are the key qualities for a successful entrepreneurship, in, in your opinion? Um, uh, there are many. The sense of urgency is one, but I think to understand your customer, everything about your customer and in biotech your investors, because if you don't, you, you can always understand the need. It's, it, it's not that hard. Medical need, it's easy. But to understand when someone would buy your asset and why, then you're in a good position to negotiate. And sometimes it's too early, perhaps, and sometimes it's not. But we need to be able to show something that can compete uh, and to meet partner requests and, and also the medical needs, of course. Yeah. We've had a question here. So from a BD perspective, how many new doors at potential future partners would you say that this deal has, has opened? What has it meant for you? So we have closed approximately 20 CDAs with big pharma companies, and then Merck was the one that succeeded all the way. Of course, now, when we approach them to show them our other program, it's a little bit easier to open that door. It was a much, much harder when we were completely unknown, knocking on their door with a preclinical asset. I, it's difficult. Mm. How long would you say that process was from first starting to talk to Mark to, to closing the deal? So if we back a few, uh, one step, I think we started to try and talk with Big Pharma long before we even have data. But the discussion with Merck, it took approximately a year, I would say, from really getting serious until we have closed the deal. But now you can see that, that the road is shorter. I hope approach. so. And we made a lot of mistakes. We made a few good things, learned from them, applied again. And of course, now it's a little bit easier to open the door, but it's still tough competition. Of course. And as a final question then, could you just tell us what 2024 has in store for Achillean? So we are excited to be able to start a phase two oh study, God. of course. And we want to progress year tab as far as we can towards phase one. And the other big uh, thing during 2024 is probably that we need to finance the phase two program. And that's what we're working with right now. Good, you saved me asking the finance question. <laughs> so perfect. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you for having me.